Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So today we are not going to solve any lead code question. Rather, we will discuss in depth about this popular algorithm, the sliding window algorithm. When we solve quality questions on arrays and strings, this algorithm plays a very major factor. That is why end-to-end -end knowledge of this algorithm becomes very important. Without further ado, let's start. So today we are going to first of all cover what is the prerequisites, what are the things one must know in advance before learning about this algorithm. Then we'll have an introduction and overview. Then we'll understand why do we even need this algorithm. Then we'll discuss about the brute force way. Then we'll discuss about even, let's say if we don't use this algorithm, what is the other way, the brute force way of solving the question. Then we'll see the code. Then we'll, in the second approach, we'll discuss about the same problem in which we will apply the sliding window algorithm and see how we are able to optimize it. Then we'll also do a whiteboard to understand the approach and the flow and everything. Then we'll understand how can we identify, given a question, given a problem, what can we do to understand, how can we actually identify that this problem needs to be solved using sliding window algorithm. Finally, we'll discuss about the types, what are the different types of algorithm and we'll see an example for that also. So coming to the prerequisites, this is something like, so sliding window algorithms usage is mostly with arrays and strings. Uh, so that is the reason why knowledge of basic loop constructs, for loop, while loop is a good thing to have. Secondly, since we have to deal with arrays and substrings, so one has to understand what does a sub array mean, what does a substring mean, what does a subsequence mean and all of that. Then comes to hashing techniques. So uh, in a bit advanced questions of sliding window algorithm, there is a usage of hash map hash set so that is why it is also important to know these concepts why are these data structures like hash map and hash set used where they are used all of that is good to have so moving on okay starting with the overview of this algorithm what is this algorithm first of all as we know any algorithm is a series of steps to solve a certain problem that is why it's a problem solving technique secondly how does this help so if we don't apply sliding window algorithm in case of questions related to arrays and strings, given a problem that we have to solve, it has been observed that when we are solving that using without using the sliding window algorithm, the time complexity of that has been observed to be order of n square, order of n cube and so on. So it is a, like a quadratic time complexity. The moment we use sliding window algorithm and that from there only the origin of this algorithm has come. The moment we have applied this algorithm to those questions, we have been able to reduce the time complexity from n square n cube to order of n. And thirdly, how it does that? It basically tries to convert two nested loops like a for loop within another for loop. We are going to see all of that in the upcoming slides. So let's say there are two for loops. Uh, which is a nested for loop and thus increasing the time complexity. Sliding window algorithm helps to convert those nested for loops into a single for loop probably. And in that way, it is trying to save on the time complexity. Okay, straight to the point, let's see a problem. So we have this array and we have a window size. What does a window size mean? It basically means a size of a sub array. So given this, we have to find out what is the maximum sum of this sub array. So what does this say? We have this array. A sub array is an array within an array, a smaller portion of the array. So if a window size k is given, k can be any integer value, let's say we have a window size of 3. So any sub array which is of size 3, we have to compute and say what can be the maximum sum of that sub array which is of size 3. So if this array we consider there can be many sub arrays of size 3, we have to just return the maximum sum of that sub array which is of size 3. That is all about this problem. So let's see how can we solve this in the most brute force, the most naive way of doing it. Okay, the first approach. What do we have to do? So we have broken it down first of all. It's something to do with sub arrays. So firstly, we have to find out the sub arrays with the given window size, whatever is given. Secondly, we are told to find out maximum sum. So first of all, let's try to find out the sum. And thirdly, when we have the sum, then we can compute what is the maximum sum. So we have broken down this question into these three steps to solve so first of all how to find the sub array so we have these two for loops so let's say i have this array over here the first for loop is going to run from the first index till length minus k so if k is equal to 3 the length is 5 5 minus 3 so it is going to run from 3 to 2 from here this is all about the first for loop within this how are we generating the sub array so we are starting from here i equal to 0 now j is also equal to 0 j equal to i 
from here it is going to run from i plus k so if i is 0 k is 3 so it is going to run till 3 less than 3 means it is actually going to run till 2 so we are going to generate the first sub array which is of length 3 what is the first sub array in this we have 3 4 and 2 this is the first sub array then once this for loop inner for loop is done then i becomes i equal to 1 which means it starts from here and when it comes here it goes again till one step ahead so it will go till like 4 2 5 so we have what are the sub arrays we have 3 4 2 we have 4 2 5 then when it moves again further ahead we have 2 5 1 so these are the three sub arrays that we have of sum of window size equal to 3 so in this way firstly we are generating the sub arrays second is to find the sum so in that we have just initialized the sum variable so whenever we are inside this inner for loop from then on we are calculating the sum by adding all the elements at the jth index means when we are over here we are adding first 3 3 plus 4 7 7 plus 2 9 then we are storing that in the sum variable and finally out of this now we have to calculate the max so as we have told first to generate the sub array is point number one point number two is to find out the sum which we are doing over here and here and point number three is to now generate the is to now compute whether this sum that we have calculated over here for that particular sub array is that the maximum sum or it is not if it is a maximum sum then this gets updated if it is not then it is going to stay as is whatever it has already stored so if we again take this example 3 4 2 5 1 first sub array is 3 4 2 which is going to give us a sum of 9 next sub array is 4 2 5 which is going to give us a sum of 11 so earlier 9 is stored the moment it becomes 11 this max sum gets updated from 9 to 11 next we have another sub array which is 2 5 1 which gives us a sum of 8 so 11 is going to stay as is because 8 is smaller and this is what we are going to finally return we are returning the max sum so far so good now can we optimize this and this is where why are we saying this because if you notice we have a nested for loop we have a for loop over here we have another for loop over here and the time complexity is going to be order of n square and that is the reason we would want to optimize this so when we want to optimize is when we are going to now learn about this sliding window algorithm how does this work why does this optimize all of that we are going to understand so this actually works on a concept of add or remove why do i say so i'll say that in the whiteboard when we are doing it so let's move on to the whiteboard okay so i'll again take this array which we had taken over here so we have this array and we want to find out the maximum sum of the window size equal to 3. So over here the first step is what to generate the sub arrays. How are we generating it? First of all we are starting from here then we are going till a window size of 3. So this is the first sub array. Next we are generating another sub array which starts from here and we go till 452. Then another sub array which starts from here and we go here till 5 to 1. So in this way we are generating all the sub arrays. If you notice this sub arrays very carefully, there is a clear overlap. What is the overlap? 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 2, 5, 2, 1. You see that the last two elements and the first two elements are always the same. 4 and 5, 4 and 5, 5 and 2, 5 and 2. So it is something like they are overlapping sequences but they appear to be separate sub arrays because we are computing it in that way by diff two different for loops and all of that. So this is what we are going to make use of to understand how this algorithm actually comes into play. So if we see what is the sum of the first sub array as we know it is 7 plus 5 12. The sum of the second sub array is 11 and the sum of the last sub array is 8. And we see that the first two elements and the last two elements are same. So if we think of it in this way, we have let's say 3, 4, 5, 2, 1 and we compute all the sum together. So it is going to be 7 plus 5, 12 plus 2, 14. So when we are calculating the sum of the first sub array, it is something like 3, 4, 5. When we are calculating the sum of the second sub array, it is something like 4, 5, 2. So in this we can observe that if we take the second sub array, if we have to calculate the sum of the second sub array is nothing but the sum of the first sub array plus we are adding a new element to this which is this element 2 and 
once we are added this then we have also removed 3 from here the point i'm trying to make is if at all i have to calculate the sum of any sub array or i'm what i'm trying to do is i'm taking the sum of the previous one i'm adding a new element to this means i'm taking the sum of this which is 12 i'm adding a new element to this 12 plus 2 is 14 and i'm also subtracting the first element from it and that is what is going to give me 11 so this is where i was talking of the concept of add and remove whenever i'm trying to generate a sub array i am adding an element a new element at the beginning and i'm removing an element from the end so in that way i don't have to write any nested for loop i can continuously keep on adding new elements and keep on removing elements from the left hand side add elements to the right hand side remove elements from the left hand side something like a running sum i'm doing and in that way i will be able to reduce my complexity instead of two for loops i can do it in one for loop okay so so far we understood that first of all we are going to take a running sum and running sum is going to solve the problem of two loops that we were having we are going to convert that into one loop so one problem is solved that we have been able to reduce the time complexity but but then the problem again remains that how are we going to calculate the window size how are we going to compute the sum and thus how are we going to calculate the maximum sum so all of that let's try to understand so after doing this the next thing is now we have to also be mindful of the k the window size which is initially set to 3 if you are doing running sum means we, if you are keeping on adding all the numbers that we have one by one we can't do it indefinitely we have to keep in mind a check of the window size that we have how are we going to keep a check on the window size so for that we are going to use two pointers i and j let's say both of them are going to start from the first index so let's say i is over here hypothetically and j is let's say over here because we are doing a running sum we are incrementing the j pointer incrementally now how can i say that i want a window size of 3 i know that when i say window size of 3 3 4 2 is there but how am i going to denote that programmatically i know that the value of i is 0 and i also know that the value of j is 2 so window size can be calculated by j minus i which is going to be 2 plus 1 which is 3 and that is what we have this window size to be so the formula to calculate window size is j minus i plus 1 that we understood so now we have this window size now what are the checks we have to do there is a possibility that we have not even reached this window size it might be less than k if it is less than k means when i am over here at 3 or when i am here at 4 it is still less than k so in that way in that case i can just increment the j point so it will keep on adding because if I have already not reached the size of the window, I can keep on adding as many numbers I want with the help of this running sum. If it is less than k. Okay. Next, what is the other possibility? That it is equal equal to k. Exactly equal to k means when I am at 2. My window size required is 3 and I have already achieved a window size of 2. Uh, sorry, window size of 3. So, in that case what I have to do? If I have already achieved, now I can do my logic to calculate the sum find out the maximum sum and all of that so i can do that while i'm doing this while i'm doing this logic of adding uh, you know of calculating whether the sum is the maximum sum or it is not my goal should be to maintain the size of the window means okay let's say i have the logic and somehow within this logic i have calculated my max sum okay great so i have calculated the max sum now what now this while loop is again going to run that the running sum is going to happen so 3 4 2 is done now it is going to try to add another number remember the scenario where we had like three numbers we had and now we are going to try to add another number so we are trying to add another number but if we add 5 to this current window of 3 4 2 we are we have already achieved a window of this the required size of 3 if we add 5 to it what we were doing we were adding 5 but we were removing an element from here and remember the i pointer is still static it has not moved yet so it is still at the first position so the moment this max sum happens and we are going to do another running sum within this part where the window size is actually equal to k we also need to have another logic in which we are going to maintain the size of the window and that is what we are going to be doing it so the idea over here is the moment it hits the size of the window i have to remove this element which is there pointed by i so how can we do that i just have to do sum minus whatever the value of that ith position's number is. That's it. Just by writing this, I have maintained the window size. So once I have maintained the window size, now I can easily go ahead and add number to it, the add a new number to it. 
and after all of this is done finally i have to return the maxim so in this way we have used the concept of add and remove elements add a new element remove a old element and thus compute the maximum sum of the sub array using one single traversal or one single loop so that's all for today if you guys think this video has added some value and you are excited for a part two of this where we are going to discuss about rest of the items so do share this with your friends and peers and what are you waiting for smash that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already thank you so much for watching